Yeah, hi folks, this is Matt again. I am going to tell you a little bit about the Shapley value now, which is one of the most prominent ways of dividing up the value of a society, the productive value of some uh, set of individuals among its members. And uh, you know the, the, the basic idea in, in coalition or cooperative games in terms of uh, trying to figure out um, allocating value is, is having some notion of what the right way to do things is. And, and we might say, even in quotes, um, say what's the fair way of, of a coalition to divide up its, its payoff. Um, it's obviously going to depend on the way that we define fairness. And uh, you know, the, the literature has basically then taken ways, uh, taken axioms as the primary way of expressing um, the properties of what uh, uh, the, the desired properties are um, of, of rules for dividing up things. So, so what we're going to do is then have some set of axioms or properties that we want to satisfy and then see what that gives us. Um, the Shapley value uh, is, is based on Lloyd Shapley's idea that uh, members should basically be receiving things which are proportional to their marginal contributions. Okay, so, so basically you look at what, what does a person add when we add them to a group, um, and they should be getting something that reflects their added value to the society. Okay, so what's the, the tricky part about this? And let's just take a quick example, and that'll give us an idea of why we have to be careful in doing this. So let's suppose that uh, the, everybody in, together in a society can generate one, but that if we're missing any member of society, um, we get zero. So this is, say, a, a committee, and the committee all has to be present in order for, for it to, to do anything. So if it's missing any of its members, it can't just make it decide, decide on anything. Um, so in this situation, what do we, th uh, so we've got, you know, V of N is equal to 1, V of S is 0 if, if uh, we're looking at any S that's smaller than N. Um, so in, in this situation, uh, what's true, then the marginal contribution, if we take any individual out of this group, uh, their marginal contribution is 1, right? So everybody is essential for generating this 1. So everybody's marginal contribution to the, the co uh, the society without them is one, and in this situation we can't pay everybody what they're responsible for in terms of, of leading uh, ultimately to the, to the grand coalition. So we're going to have to think about some way of weighting contributions in order to uh, come up with a, a reasonable thing, and, and obviously for this particular rule it would be reasonable to, to, to add up things by one over n, so everybody gets one nth of the contribution. Um, but in rules where, in situations where there might be some asymmetry, asymmetries in terms of who contributes which value, we're going to have to think fairly carefully about how this should be weighted. Okay, so Shapley's axioms are going to give us a handle on this, so let's take a look at those. Um, so the first idea is a very simple one and, and one which pretty much any rule that you would, would think of in these settings is, is going to satisfy. So if we think of two different members of society, say I and J, if they contribute the same thing to every possible coalition in which they could be a member, they're completely interchangeable. So that uh, if we're looking at some uh, coalition that has neither I nor J in it, if we add I to that coalition, we get exactly the same value as we get when we add J to that coalition. If they're interchangeable, then they should be getting out the same allocation of value. So if psi is the way that we're dividing up the value from some co coalitional game, then we should be giving the same thing to I as J when they're completely interchangeable. Okay? This is a fairly uncontroversial axiom. Um, it, it, it really captures a basic notion of fairness that if, this, you know, if individuals are completely equivalent, they should get equivalent payments. Okay, next axiom, um, dummy players. So I'm sure that, that everyone has had some... Uh, experiences with people like this. Um, what's the idea? There's a, a situation where you, you add a person I to a coalition and they, they add absolutely nothing. So no matter what S we look at, if we add I to a particular S, um, we get the same value as, as the situation with, uh, without that individual. So basically, um, the person's completely worthless uh, 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 no matter what coalition we're looking at. Um, so the, the idea is, uh, then the axiom is, if an individual is a dummy player, then we give them nothing. Um, now, you know, this is, on, on one hand, it's a fairly reasonable axiom. If somebody's contributed absolutely nothing, there's no reason they should get anything. 
Uh, on the other hand, um, this depends very much on the perspective you're taking. So if we're thinking about a society, it could be that, that I contributes nothing because of reasons beyond I's control. So something happened, they had a, a, an accident or um, for, for some particular reason, they um, are, are unable to function. Uh, society might still want to allocate something to those individuals. So it really depends on what the time perspective is, whether we're thinking about social insurance um, and so forth. But, but nonetheless, it's a fairly intuitive axiom and is going to be a fairly powerful one in, uh, in what it delivers. Next one is additivity. Um, this one is one which you might think of more about the process of allocating value. So let's suppose that we can think about uh, looking at a cooperative game or a coalitional game and we can, it's one that separates very nicely into two different parts. So we can think of it as, as uh, you've got one uh, cooperative game, you've got another one, and then we think of what do you get when you sum these two things together. And the idea is that if we're looking at two different co uh, cooperative games, and then we think about what would happen if you uh, were trying to allocate something when you summed them up, you should get the same thing from allocating one uh, allocating according to the second and then adding those two things up okay so the idea here is if, if we're looking at a cooperative game where the value for any coalition is just what it gets under the first game plus what it gets under the second game then the way that we allocate value should be how we allocated things under the first game plus how we allocated things under the second game so you, you know this is uh, 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 fairly obvious in terms of what it means mathematically, in terms of, of how you interpret this and what the story is for why you might desire to have to satisfy an axiom like this, that's a little uh, harder. You could think of this as a story for saying, you know, maybe society one day produces according to V1 um, and the next day according to V2, and if what it produces the second day doesn't depend on what it produced the first day, then we should we should be able to allocate uh, the the uh, fruits of the production in the first day and then allocate again uh, on the second day and and those things um, Since they don't interact at all We should be able to do that separately and what an individual gets is just the sum of those two things So you can you know think of a fairly logical uh, story for for this kind of axiom Okay, so what do we get from these three axioms? Um, the Shapley value and let's have a look at that exactly how you define the Shapley value so the value the, the Shapley value is going to be uh, marginal calculations. What does an individual I add to coalitions that don't have I when we add? So we've got a uh, coalition with I in it, coalition without I. We, we then take a, a peek at uh, how much that uh, generates. And then what we're going to be doing is weighting that by different possible ways in which we could have come up with this marginal calculation and then dividing through by all the possible ways that uh, we could have done this. Okay, so we're, we'll make sure we average over all these things uh, so that everything sums up to the full value. Okay, that's the, the Shapley value. We're going to dissect this in, in more detail in a moment. Um, and what's the theorem? The theorem is that if we look at a coalitional game or a cooperative game, um, there's a unique way uh, that divides the full payoff of the grand coalition. So if we're making sure we're dividing everything up, that satisfies symmetry dummy and additivity. So if you put those three axioms together, there's only one way to do it, and that way is the Shapley value. So there's a unique uh, way which does satisfy these, and uh, it, it's the Shapley value. So that's a pretty powerful theorem. Um, there's a, a fairly elegant proof to this. Um, it's uh, 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 fairly intuitive. Um, we're not going to go through that in detail, but we'll go through some explanations of this. You can find the proof uh, fairly easily in, in a number of different places. Um, there's actually a, a nice book um, by Osborne um, and Rubenstein, for instance, um, which is free online, which has a proof of this. But there's a, a number of places where you can find this. Okay, let's ta have a peek at um, the actual value in terms of what, how this breaks down, and then we'll look at some examples. So um, what in individual I is giving is, according to this formula, looks a little daunting, but the intuitions are fairly simple. So let's think, we're thinking of marginal contributions. How are they coming about? Um, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to think of all the different possible ways we could build society up. So for instance, we could be building society up by, by first adding person one, then adding person, uh, say, three, then adding person two. 
right? So we could, that, that would be one order in which we could build a society up. Um, we could also have built it up by first adding person two, then adding person three, um, then adding person one, right? So there's a whole series of different ways that we had a three-person society that we could go about um, building these things up. And in each, according to each one of these orders, we'll have different, set, uh, different marginal contributions along the way. So here, first person one contributes something, then person three adds their production, then person th uh, two adds their production, and so forth. So we end up with these, these different contributions. Um, and that's what this is going to capture. So what we're doing is we're looking at these different sequences. And the first part we're doing is, is calculating, uh, as we went along the sequence, um, what did I add when they were added? Um, next, we weight this by the different possible ways that we could have uh, built up the coalitions before I was added. Then uh, we also weight this by the different orders, uh, different ways we could add the individuals who haven't been added yet after I has been added, right? So there's a uh, um, number of individuals minus the number that are already in S minus I. Um, so that's the number of, of ways the people that are still left. Uh, in fact, take that to the factorial, gives us how many different orders we can still add people in. So we weight it by that. And then uh, we're summing over all possible combination uh, coalitions that are there before I. And then we're dividing through by the total number of different orderings we could have over uh, people in a society. OK, so that's the Shapley value. Um, and in terms of understanding this, again, what we could think of in terms of the, the ways in which we divide up a society, we can think of you know, adding person one first, then one, two. One, two, three, we could have added one first, then three. One, two, three, we could have added um, two first, then one, then three, two first, then three, three first, then one, three first, then two, one, two, three, and so forth. So we could have done this in a whole series of different orders. So there's six of these, right? Six different orders. And so for instance, if we want to add, figure out what person one adds when we add them, in the first case, this is V1. Second case, this is V1. Third case, what are they adding? They're adding V1, two minus V of two that was already there. Um, third case, they're getting V of one, two, three minus V of two, three. Uh, that's the fourth case. The fifth case, um, we're getting V of 1, 3 minus V of 3 um, and so forth, right? So we've got here V of 1, 2, 3 minus V of 2, 3, okay? That's the Shapley value. So each one of these things is getting weighted by a sixth. Um, here, this turns out then to, to get a total weight of, of 1 third. Um, again, here, we're going to get a weight of 1 third. And then these two are each getting a weight of one sixth each, right? So that gives us the total value of the Shapley value, and that tells us what person one should be getting in this setting. Um, you know, let, let's take a look at a, at a simple, simpler example, just with two individuals, and try and figure out exactly what the Shapley value gets. So these are two people; they form a partnership. So person one alone was generating production of one. Person two was generating a production of two. They say, wow, let's get together and form a partnership. We can do better than we can separately. Um, they generate a total value of four. So this is uh, nicely super additive. We're getting a higher value when we've got the two together. Um, and now they, they sort of, at the end, they try and say, okay, well, how should we divide the four among, uh, among them? Well, in this case, we could have added one first and then one come up with one, two. Um, the other possibility is we get two first and then one, two, right? So there's only two different ways we could have built society up. So person one in the first, if we're trying to figure out what to give person one out of this, here they would get V1, right, which is one. Here they would get uh, V1, two minus V of two, the marginal contribution they added if they're added second. This is the marginal contribution if they were added first. Um, what's this value? This value is um, two, and each one of these gets a, a weight ultimately of one half. 
because we've got two of these things. So we're adding a half of one, a half of two. We get 1.5 is equal to phi of one. Um, you can go through, you can check that 2.5 then is going to be equal to phi of 2. So here, what do we end up with? The Shapley value gives us that if these are the, the contributions that people were making, um, you're going to end up with 1.5 as the right amount to give to person 1 and 2.5 to give to person 2. Okay? So they're each, uh, in this case, um, getting some value that depends on uh, the, the, so it's, it's taking into account what these values are in, in trying to divide the four. So they don't just say, okay, let's just split the four 50-50. Um, they're, they're doing a different calculation than that. And it uh, comes out at 1.5 and 2.5 in this case. Okay, um, so what about the Shapley value? It allocates the value of a group according to marginal calculations. Uh, it's captured by some very simple logic and, and axioms. Um, and what you could do is you, you can think of other axioms. You could think of other ways, other fairness ideas, or other kinds of things that you desire your, your rule to satisfy, and that's going to come up and make different kinds of predictions. And we'll take a look at the core next, which is uh, another, it uses a different kind of logic than the Shapley value um, for, for, for making predictions about how a society should divide up its values.